Have you ever met a true traveler? Someone who's interesting and they've traveled the world and, you know, maybe they've hiked the greatest trails in mm -hmm. the world or they've been on the greatest train journeys and, and you look at them and you think, could I do that too? I know. And these are not people on vacation. These are people on a journey. You know, they, they fill their hearts and minds with experiences. Yeah. Um, and they come in all ages. They may be old, they may be young or somewhere in between. Yeah, in today's video, we want to talk about the traveler you know what does it take to be a real traveler and and what can it do for your life more importantly how can it reset your life even if you're in retirement um, you know what does a travel do to you what has it done for us and it, how it, has it changed our lives? it has completely changed our lives so let's find out more we're John and Beth and we are the retirement travelers if you're just joining us, we are traveling the world in retirement and we are currently in Asia. Uh, we are writing blogs and making videos. So be sure you head over to our website, retirementtravelers.com and be sure you sign up for our newsletter. So before we get started, let's talk about some of the misconceptions about world travel. One of the first misconceptions is that you have to be rich to travel the world. Yes, that's definitely a misconception because as we've traveled the past three years, we have seen so many other fellow travelers that are really traveling on a shoestring budget. I mean, we know people that are traveling the world full time for $30,000 a year. And that doesn't mean you're not going to get great experiences. We personally have visited probably 15 wonderful countries that are all low cost. Yeah, we actually love the low cost countries. Yeah. I mean, you get the real experience. Experience and it's not touristy. I mean, once a place is a tourist spot, it the costs go way up. But we have been to countries like Guatemala and Albania and you know Bulgaria and Romania, and now we're over here in Asia and Vietnam and Cambodia and Laos. These are wonderful places, and you get a real travel experience in these places. So you do not need a lot of money to do this. The number two misconception is you have to have a partner to do this with. Now, I, I like having my partner to do this with, but we have seen plenty of solo travelers all over the world. Yeah, especially women. I mean, women are the largest segment of solo travelers, and people are surprised by this, but the statistics are showing that women travelers are out there doing it. Now, we have met travelers that are women who are on all on their own, completely on their own, young girls, older women, it doesn't matter, but we've also met women who are joining together through groups. There are Facebook groups, there are uh, different agencies, I guess, that will match you up with a partner to travel with if you want to, but don't be you know, oh, I can't do it because I don't have a partner to do it with. Maybe your husband doesn't want to travel, but join one of these groups and find someone to do it with, or maybe you're single. That's right. Where there's the, options. Where there's a will, there's a way, so go travel the world. The third misconception is that you have to be on a guided tour to see the world. Yeah, I would say 80 or 90% of our travels is not on a guided tour. That's I mean, right. we will occasionally do a cruise or places that are hard to get to, but it's kind of fun planning your own trip and, and customizing it to exactly what you want to do. Yeah, you can go to our website and you can see some of our blogs if you want to go to a country and you can see exactly what to do in these places that we've been. We're trying to do that as we travel to share our journey with you so it can help you. But a DIY travel experience is really rewarding and it's not that hard. I think a lot of people wonder, oh, what would I do? How do I get there? Let me tell you, it is no different than traveling in the state you live in to the next state or across the country or going to Vegas or going to New York City or going to one of these places. Yeah, I saw, I saw a stat one time that if you do it yourself versus a guided tour, it's about, I think, two and a half times more expensive. So you could go on a two and a half week trip for the same price as roughly a one week guided tour trip. Just kind of ballpark numbers, but I'd rather go for a longer trip. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the fourth misconception is there are just a few great places to really go to. Yeah, we kind of get in this rut as Americans and we've done it ourselves in thinking we have to go to Rome and we have to go to Venice and we have to go to Santorini and we have to go, you know, all of these places. Now that we've been on the road, we can with 100% accuracy tell you these places are all wonderful and you should go to them. but. There's so many more places in the world. Yeah, what, what we found is if you see a bunch of other American tourists there, the 
price is probably going to be triple what it is in other places. Now, we, we spent three months in the Balkans last summer. We had some amazing experiences in Romania, Bulgaria, yeah. and we had just as much fun for probably a third the cost as we did going to Rome and Venice. Yeah, we really did. I mean, it, I think back and just hearing you say those words, it made me like have this warm feeling in my heart thinking about Bulgaria and thinking about Serbia. I yeah. mean, Serbia, who goes to Serbia? But we had a great time there. So expand your horizons and think, you know, the world's a big, big place. And even if, you know, you can only go to 10 places in the world, Pick places that are not the tourist mecca and you will have a fabulous trip. And, and if you still have Rome on your sites or Florence, you know, stay outside the city an hour and take take the train in and yeah. go spend a couple of days like that. You'll, you'll reduce your costs and still get to see, you know, some of the great sites of the world. So let's talk about the things that you do need if you want to be a world traveler. And the first thing you need is a can-do attitude. Yeah, that's probably the most important thing. Now, you know, we didn't grow up or, or live our lives yeah. traveling all the time. You know, we traveled some with work and we traveled some with the kids, but there was a lot we did not know. Yeah, we learned as we went. Um, we read, we studied, but you know, part of it is just doing it. And I think some people say to us, I don't know how you got the bravery to do this. And we're like, what bravery yeah. did we have? We just showed up and we arrived at an airport and we said, okay, what's next? You know, it's, it's probably the same as, you know, riding a bike or surfing or golfing or whatever. The first time you try something new, it's, it's difficult and it's scary and you have a hard time. The same with traveling. But as we travel more and more, you know, we're getting more and more comfortable all yeah. the time. So we would encourage you, you know, have that can-do attitude and just go out and plan a trip and, and go for it. Number two is you need to have the ability to keep your fears in check. Yes. Be being fearful and being careful are two different things. Yeah. I think for us, we started off our world travels being a little too fearful and uh, it certainly helped us to be careful, but we have really never been in a situation where we were unsafe. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, we, the only thing that, uh, when we were in Panama that one time, the bus dropped us off at the wrong place and it was not the greatest neighborhood. And we actually had one of the local ladies said, don't go down that street because uh, there's a lot of crime there. So we walked the other way. And so a local person helped us out. And uh, we have had local people help uh, us. Yes, if you, if you look at the ratio of good people to bad people, it's like 9,999 <laughs> to one. I mean, rarely ever have we uh, encountered bad people around the world. The third thing you need is the desire to learn. Yes, what an opportunity to learn. I mean, just to get around. You, you need to want to learn how to, how to buy bus tickets, how to get on the metro. You know, in some countries that don't speak your language, just finding your hotel can be an adventure sometime. <laughs> it is for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely for us. So there's just so much opportunity. I mean, you learn about geography and cultures and, you know, amazing stuff about, around the world. Yeah, museums, uh, just everywhere you go, there's a learning opportunity. And uh, we never are, you know, we it never ceases to amaze us as how little we know before we get there. <laughs> I know, and how much we learn while we're there. I mean, one week in a country or a city and doing the, the, the local things and talking to people, it, it's, it's amazing how it, it truly shrinks the world. The places that seem so far away are now, you know, always on our mind and, and we've seen them and experienced them. The fourth thing is you really need to be a person that takes adversity and then moves on from it. Yes, because no one is going to do it perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter how much we know about something or whether we've even been to a place before. We sometimes come up against a wall and we're like, okay, this didn't go like we wanted. Or, you know, I remember us trying to get into Costa Rica. We had a plane ticket to get in and we were going to take the bus out but we had to buy another ticket at the airport. They said, you have to have an exit flight if you're going to fly in. Things like that happen, and you just have to learn to let it go and move on. Uh, you're gonna miss a flight, you're gonna miss a bus, you're gonna, things are gonna happen. You're not gonna have money at the, uh, when you pay for your visa and you're gonna have to run back over to the ATM. There's just gonna be things that happen and you're just better off just to let those things go 
and move on. Yeah, I think the official count, well, there's not an official count, but the number of mistakes that we've made in the last three <laughs> years is, is probably, you know, three or four hundred, okay? We have made <laughs> lots of little mistakes, but everyone we've learned from. So we'd like to think we're making less and less all the time, but you know what? Every new country you go into, offers a new challenge, you know, yeah. whether it's, you know, what the rules are around getting a visa or what the currency is or you name it, there's always something new to learn. So let's talk about travel and how it's impacted us and what have we learned from traveling? How has it changed us? You know, the first thing really has nothing to do with travel. Uh, it's about we could live without all of our stuff. Now, we recently <laughs> yeah. did a video called A Life Without Stuff where we kind of, you know, chronicled our journey of, of downsizing and getting rid of all of our stuff. And what has kind of surprised us is we have not missed it one bit. You know, it has completely changed our focus uh, more toward travel experiences and memories instead of stuff. I think the next thing that we have done in this whole process is we've become more reflective mm -hmm. and not so reactive, but more reflective about our life. Um, you know, we've thought back about how we got here, about our childhoods. Mm -hmm. We've talked about our family more. We've, we've, it's just helped us to come to the point in our life where we see the, the, the things that have gotten us down the road and, and how they've, we've come here. And that's been a really good introspective part of our journey. The next thing that World Travel's done, it has, it has shrunk the world to us. You know, we, we no longer think about faraway places like Cambodia as, as around the world. Now it's just another place that we have visited and, and it's some place that we know. You know, when we started our retirement journey, we thought only about you know living in Florida or, or which state were you going to live in. Now the the world is our retirement uh, uh, home, <laughs> playground. I mean, playground. I mean, we we feel like we could go and live anywhere. We could go travel anywhere. Uh, it's expanded it beyond the United States. So you know, world travel helps you shrink the world, and you realize it's a big place, but also it's it's all within your grasp. The next thing this has taught us is the bond that we have is a strong bond. We always knew that we were a good team, mm -hmm. but this has bonded us. We've had to learn to count on each other to, you know, give the other one a little space and, and figure a problem out or, or solve something or get us somewhere. And I don't know, it's just felt like it's been a good thing for us as a, in a marriage. It's caused us to, you know, go together as a team and solve problems together and work our way through things. Yeah, don't I mean, you, think? you would think that spending 365 uh, days together, you know, 24-7, yeah. you know, could have some pitfalls, but actually it's been wonderful. And, and I, I definitely think our marriage is stronger now than even before, and yeah. it was good before. Yeah. It's reinforced for us that connections matter and that we're really in charge of driving those connections. I mean, when, when we travel the world, we go out of our way you know, to meet new people, to make new contacts. Um, we've stayed with people all over the world. We, we, we hear from people online, some of our viewers. We, we meet fellow travelers. Uh, we, we actually keep a notebook of all the people that we've met so that we can stay in touch. I mean, it, it's opened up a whole new world of, of friendships and, and yeah. knowledge from other people that has just been wonderful. Yeah, and it's even the little things. It's the, you know, offering to take someone's picture. I've taken pictures around the world uh, just by saying, hey, can I help you? With, would you like a picture together? Because you see uh, someone trying to take a picture of their, their partner and, and they just can't quite get that selfie. And can I help you? That's been the thing. Or we speak to someone, we say, hello, where are you from? And, and the more we give of ourselves as we travel, the more we get back. Yeah, we, we've invited a number of people uh, to go to dinner with us, many of them half our age, but it's kind of, yeah. you know, we like to hang out with young people, old people. You, you get a different <laughs> perspective and flavor uh, uh, from all different ages. So we just love meeting new people around the world. So one of the biggest things that has changed for us is the trajectory of our life and the direction that we're taking our life. Everything about our life has changed. How we look at the world, how we interact with the world, how we journey, how we reflect. I mean, just every single thing. That's right. The, the last three years of travel, we've probably learned more than the other 30 years of our <laughs> life. Okay, okay yeah. a little more than that, but <laughs> we have learned so much these last three years. It, it has changed our perspectives. It's changed our needs. It's changed our, you know, our how wants. much we've learned, our wants. 
um, we are going to have a better retirement because of our experiences, you know, these last three years. And it's just going to keep getting better because we're not stopping. We're, yeah. we're going to continue to travel and continue to be open for what the world has to teach us on who we're going to meet. It's, it's, exciting it's exciting for you. It is. Yeah, but travel can do that for you yeah. too. So, you know, be brave, be bold, figure out a way to get around the world and, and uh, you know, go off on an adventure. It can just make your life rich and full and exciting. Yes, and, and of course, follow along, watch our videos, check out our website, drop us a note if you got a question. We love to hear from you. You know, we, we want to help you be the best world travelers you can be. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Be sure to hit subscribe and follow along on our retirement journey around the world.